If you want to be a software engineer at Google, you're going to be surprised that less than 1% of all candidates actually get an offer. That is harder than getting into Harvard. Now, most people would think that all you need to do to get in is to solve a ridiculous amount of leak code questions. But if you look at all these posts, people who are solving 300, 400, or 500 questions, they're still failing interviews. So what is going on? If you've ever had a really big exam at school and you got stuck on this one question that you knew the answer to, but you couldn't remember it until you left the classroom, as frustrating as that is, that's what happens to a lot of these programmers. Whether you're just learning how to code or you have years of experience, I'm going to reveal the secret coding framework that's going to get you unstuck and boost your confidence for any coding interview. And that starts by explaining the three key stages of any coding interview, how to plan your code, how to write your code, and how to explain your code. Keep in mind that everything that I'm sharing with you is to help you organize your thoughts and communicate clearly so that you can become a software engineer. All right, so let's talk about planning your code. This can be broken down into two sections, clarifying the problem and explaining the algorithm. If you ever have a Zoom interview with a tech company, you're going to feel a little nervous. The first thing the interviewer is going to do when they join the call is to explain the coding problem they want you to solve. What you have to do before anything else is to clarify the problem. Because if you accidentally work on the wrong problem, or you jump straight into implementing it, you're going to get an automatic rejection. To protect yourself, clarify the problem by giving your own example inputs and outputs. This shows that you know how to communicate and that you do understand the problem that we're working on. Then you have to ask about three different edge cases to prove that you are a problem solver. This could be anything from talking about the input size, working with negative numbers, or anything else. When you're done with all of this, you can start talking about how to solve the problem. Now, after doing so many leak code problems, what I hate the most about it is that it forces everyone to think about the most optimal perfect solution every single time. What people should really be doing is starting with the naive solution, the dumb solution, the simple solution. This is important because it validates that you're solving the right problem, and it gives you a really good starting point for what you're working on. You might be even surprised that this is all the interviewer is asking for, so don't solve a harder problem than you have to. But if they're asking for something that's a little bit more advanced and optimal, then we're going to have to start talking about a better solution. If you're struggling to come up with the most optimal solution, really think about if more practice is going to help you, or if you're just a little nervous. If you're still working on your fundamentals, the Leak Code 75 is the best way to start. But if you're just a little nervous, then you're going to go through that same feeling where the answer is going to pop into your head after the interview. We want to make sure that doesn't happen, so what you should really be doing first is to come up with a really simple solution. In your Zoom call, tell the interviewer that you're going to drop some restrictions to make the problem easier for you to solve. Use simple test cases and different algorithms. If a problem is asking you to solve it with binary search, ask if first you can talk about how to solve it with linear search. The interviewer is going to be more likely to help you because they can see your thought process. And when you finally come up with the best solution, here's what's going to dramatically improve your chances of getting an offer you have to write down your algorithm. This is the most important thing that you can do because it sets the foundation for the rest of the coding interview. Outline your algorithm and outline your thoughts to communicate them to the interviewer. Do this by writing down comments and bullet points for your algorithm in your text editor. Talk about what data structure you need, what algorithms you're using, and how it relates to the final answer. As you're doing this, speak out loud and ask the interviewer if they have any questions. If you're good to go, you can finally start coding. As you're writing code, you have to be confident. The interviewer isn't going to say much as you're writing code. They just want to see that you're going to write down exactly what you mentioned in your outline. At this point, the interviewer is evaluating you on communication and coding efficiency. To better explain, I remember giving a candidate a coding interview where he could definitely solve the problem. He was a master's student with a few years of internship experience, so he's had a little bit of coding practice under his belt. Everything was going really well. He outlined his algorithm clearly and he gave me the optimal solution. But when he started coding, he went silent. I could still follow the code that he was writing, and he got a little stuck parsing a string. But after about 15 minutes, he was able to figure it out. And he barely solved the interview in 45 minutes. I gave him a pass because he outlined his algorithm well, and he was able to code the correct solution. But I was really surprised to hear that he didn't get an offer. When I heard about the feedback from the other interviewers, they told me it was because he didn't communicate enough. Now, he has a few years of internship experience for him, so I'm sure he's doing well, but he would definitely stand out if he talked about his code a little bit more. Now, communicating your code doesn't have to be hard. It's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is actually just talk out loud as you're coding and talk about how it relates to the outline that you wrote earlier. Now, if you struggle with multitasking like I do, the best strategy is to actually talk about what you're going to write and how it relates to your algorithm and then code in silence. So what I need to do here is to sort the input to get the largest element. I'm going to sort that using a library function and then return the last element. 
and then you can go off coding. Now, how quickly you write your code is called coding efficiency. And this relates to a lot of things like using good variable names and how easy it is to read your code. But as you're coding, everyone is going to get stuck somewhere. And this is the scariest part of the interview. But how you react to it determines whether or not you get an offer. When you only have 30 minutes for your Zoom call, you don't have time to stay stuck on a small coding issue. You don't have time to stay stuck on a string parsing issue. Remember this tip that you can always come back to different parts of your code later. If you're stuck on something, leave it to do and write down the rest of your algorithm. When you're done, you can come right back to it. A time-saving hack I like to tell everyone is that you can actually leave to do's for null checks. Come back to it if the interviewer really cares, but you're going to be surprised that oftentimes they don't. Now, after that you do all this and you finish writing your code, the interviewer is just trying to figure out what level that you belong at. Are you a junior engineer who just tries to get your code to work? Or are you a senior engineer who has years of experience? The difference is how proactive you are at trying to explain your code. Albert Einstein once famously said that if you can't explain it simply enough, then you don't understand it well enough. This is the last step the interviewer is evaluating you on. When you finish writing your code, you have two options. You could either run your code against the test cases you wrote down earlier, or you can think about an even more optimal solution. The simple way to figure out what you should do is to just ask. Invite the interviewer and ask them what they want you to do. If they want you to optimize your code, you're going to have to go through the entire process of optimizing your code and explaining your thought process all over again. It's just a repeat of everything that we mentioned in this video. But before you do that and listen to this, you have to talk about where the bottleneck is in your code. You do this by going through each section of your code and writing down what the running time is. Then you can point out and explain why the bottleneck of your code is at that section and how you're going to optimize it. But if you're already at the most optimal solution, then the only thing left to do is to prove that your code works. And the best way to do that is by picking a test case and running it through your code line by line. When testing your edge cases, you have to show how the input slowly becomes the expected output. But listen and remember this is that most people forget that input size matters. Dry run your code against small test cases because if they're too big or too hard, you're going to run out of time explaining your code. And that's everything you need to get an offer.